This is Alicia with All Things Alicia, and I'm here today with a seed review. Um, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. So last, I think it was last December, I did a review of all the seeds I had planted like all last year, um, reviewed them all, and then I sort as I reviewed them in, in um, categories, like all the tomatoes, all the whatevers, and then as I went through each I sorted them into companies and then I reviewed the companies I bought them from. Um, you guys seem to like that. Had a lot of good feedback about that video. I thought I would do the same thing again this year. I always love hearing about what people have planted, what varieties, um, where they are, where they bought them from and why or why not. Um, as far as buying the same ones or same, from the same place. I am gonna do something a little bit different this year though. Instead of doing all the seeds for the whole year, I'm going to break it into two sections. So today I'm going to be reviewing everything that I planted over the summer. All your standard tomatoes, corn, cucumbers, that kind of thing. Um, and I'm going to do maybe January, February. I will do one with the spring, fall, cool crop type things that I planted. And the reason I'm doing it that way, besides length of video, is that um, I didn't plant as much in the spring this past year. I I, most of those vegetables, I actually just prefer the flavor of in the fall. Um, I don't like spring carrots. I love fall carrots, that kind of thing. And so all those things are growing out there right now, and we're just starting to eat those. So I don't want to review those yet um, because I don't feel like I have enough information to give you. Um, but I do want to review them eventually. So um, breaking it into the cool crops and the summer crops. So starting off at summer, I've got a whole bucket of seeds here. Um... I don't think, I didn't, I'm realizing I didn't pull anything of my fruit ordering history, but I, maybe I'll do a separate video of that. Okay, so um, let's see, looks like we're gonna be starting with tomatoes. Tomatoes, okay. I always plant a lot of tomatoes, um, even though every year I say, <laughs> I'm gonna plant less different types and more of the ones I know I love, okay. So um, let's see, I have these sorted here, starting with the small cherry style tomatoes, and then I have a pile of the bigger tomatoes. So um, Vermont Bean Company here, let's see. I ordered Orange Peruche Hybrid. I love the Orange Peruche Tiny Tomatoes. I grew those for the first time last year. They became one of my favorites. And then I couldn't find the seeds for them anywhere this year. So I got them from a new company, new to me, not a new company, new to me. Vermont Bean Seed Company. These did just as fine as the ones I um, grew last year. They tasted just as good. I love that tomato. I would recommend it to anybody. Um, Candyland Reds, also something I planted last year and wanted again this year. They're actually really, really tiny, but I love to just grab a handful and throw them to my chickens. Um, Super Sweet 100 Hybrid. Okay, so for years and years, I have planted Sweet 100s. And then they came out with Super Sweet 100s. Now they're Sweet Millions. And there's all these different ones. But you know what? I like the flavor of the regular Sweet 100s the best. And I could not find them anywhere this year. I was afraid that was going to happen. It's kind of been whittling down over time. But no one sold those seeds this year that I could find. If you have a source for just regular Sweet 100 tomato seeds, I would love to know what it is. Um, so I went ahead and planted the Super Sweet 100 Hybrid. They were fine. They grew well. I just feel like... I like the flavor of those plain old sweet 100s better. Um, next one, the yellow pear tomato, another standard favorite around here. Um, they are prone to splitting. Here in East Tennessee, we do get summer storms and they'll split, but I just pull the ones that split off and feed them to my chickens. Um, but I like these tomatoes as well. What is this? Oh, that's a big one. Um, this was a new one to me. I tried this Napa Chardonnay tomato this year. Um, that I obviously got from Baker Creek. They were beautiful, beautiful tomatoes. They germinated very, very well. Um, I had to sacrifice some plants because they like all germinated. They grew well. They produced very well. I wasn't a huge fan of the flavor. They weren't bad. They were just kind of bland to me. They were very watery with a light tomato flavor. Um, so, I mean, if you want a light tomato flavor, you could try those. They're, they're really pretty on the vine though, but I won't be planting those again this year. Um, I forgot to sort those. Um, even though they're really pretty. <laughs> like I said, really, really pretty. Okay, big tomatoes. Let's see. Um, slicers and paste. Okay, tomatillos. 
I grew these from in my garden this year. Um, I'm not supposed to be able to grow tomatillos in my zone, but I did and it was awesome. And these were very, very prolific <laughs> and they germinated very, very easily. And I will plant these again next year and I will plant less of them. Um, I got way more than what I needed out my ears. Okay, slicing tomatoes. A new one I tried this year just for because I love the name was the hillbilly potato leaf tomato. Um, it's a pretty tomato. When it's green, it has this like stripiness to it that kind of goes away when it ripens. Um, it tasted fine. I didn't get to eat that many of them. This one, and I did read this, but I wanted to try it anyways. They're kind of prone to uh, just everything. Diseases in the garden, bugs, everything. Um, I struggled in my garden with wilt this year with everything and these succumbed to it, but they were just, I mean, they, they germinated well, they grew well. Um, they tasted pretty good, but they just weren't, to me, they don't replace a regular old beef steak. That's my favorite. Um, so I won't grow them again, but they were fun. Um, uh, Momotoros, uh, these were something I grew for the first time last year and liked. They taste almost exactly like a beef steak, but they're more perfectly round. Like your beef steaks kind of have more ridges and wonky shapes. And these are a little bit smaller and perfectly round and they were just, they're just really pretty. Um, and I like the flavor. I will, I bought these again this year and I will continue to keep growing those. Um, they do well for me. Uh, this year I could, uh, let's see. I, okay, beef steak tomatoes. I had to get from Gurney's this year because everyone else was sold out. Um, they did fine. Beef steak tomatoes. They're my, they're my standby slicing tomato. I will always plant beef steak tomatoes. I did save some of my own seeds this year. Um, I have not tested them yet. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how those do. Um, I've never had beef steak seeds go wrong, no matter who I bought them from. Um, and then the last slicing tomato I grew was the Steakhouse Hybrid Tomato. I got these from Burpee, and their description was just really, really cool. Um, they just made them sound delicious. They were pretty good, but they still, to me, were not. If you hear that beeping, it's my Instant Pot. They were not as good to me as a beefsteak, and they were, um, I don't know. I won't grow them again. Why grow two things that are almost the same? I just prefer the beef steak, especially since this is a hybrid, so I can't save the seeds, but a beef steak I can. I didn't feel like being a hybrid made it any better as far as um, its strength or its viability or how it held up to different problems in the garden, so I'll just stick to my beef steak. Okay, this year I planted two um, paste tomatoes. I this was the first year I planted the paste tomatoes. I think I grew an Amish paste once before just because that was like the only thing I could find eons ago. I didn't really pay attention. But everyone talks about the Amish paste. Um, and so I planned those. I got mine from Baker Creek. They did do very well. They're very prolific. They're way bigger than I thought they would be because paste tomatoes are kind of, you know, smaller. Um, they were very prolific. They, gen they uh, germinated well. I will plant those again. Um, and then I also at the last minute decided to try the San Marzano paste tomatoes. And um, cause people rave about these, they're expensive in the store. Um, they were good, they were very prolific. They also easily, um, they easily germinated. They grew healthy and had lots of fruit, but I didn't feel like they were any better than Amish paste as far as flavor. And they were smaller. So I'll probably just stick with the Amish paste in the future. I don't know. That's my current plan. Okay, looks like I have herbs lined up here next. Um, where's the herbs? Okay. Um, first time for me, dark opal basil that I got from MI Gardener, and this was beautiful. Beautiful. Um, I will grow this again just for foliage, and I will put it more in my landscape, and I will um, feed it to my chickens. I won't eat it. It doesn't taste bad. It just, to me, it tastes like mostly basil with a touch of like a licorice -y taste, a touch of an anise taste. And that's not a taste I like. So uh, I, it was just a touch though. Like I would eat this, it'd be fine, but I just prefer regular basil. But I, it was so pretty that I will still grow it. Um, I'll grow it again. I will put it in bouquets. I will feed it to my chickens. I will just enjoy its beauty because it's that beautiful to me, but I'm not gonna eat it myself. Um, Genevieve's basil, this was, 
a star of my garden this year. They germinate well, they grow well, they're delicious. They're very, they grow, I mean, if you pinch them off when they're little, they just get, I had huge bushes of basil by the end of the year and I got, um, I dried, I have two half gallon jars of dried basil for the winter and some in the freezer, like in little oil packets. And then we ate it fresh all summer long. So really good producer. Um, Flat leaf parsley that I got from Pine Tree, that did okay. Not my best parsley year, but it did fine. Um, I got some thyme from Haas, that also did okay. Not a superstar year for that, but that was that was fine. Comfrey was new to me this year. Um, I grew it mostly for the medicinal stuff. I dried some comfrey leaves, haven't used them yet. I'm kind of just venturing out into that area. So I grew some more plants like borage and comfrey and, and calendula and stuff this year because I want to kind of learn more about that stuff. Um, but so far all I did, I did was, was dry some leaves. Um, borage, same thing. I put one in the middle of my garden for pollination, but also have one out front. It's kind of an odd looking, but pretty in its own way plant. Um, these germinated fine, grew fine attracted a lot of pollinators, the borage, like the bees around me liked the borage a lot. Um, okay, I grew three types of dill. I got, from Gurney's, I got Dill Delight. From Territorial, I got Hera Dill. And then from Pine Tree, I got Fern Leaf Dill. Um, I believe Hera, where's my Hera? The Hera from Territorial, I believe was my biggest producing dill. They all did okay. They all germinated. They all um, gave me some dill. I prefer to use the, I don't like to use dill seeds as much as the foliage. So I like the fern leaf frilly dills. Um, so that's usually what I'm looking for. Um, I feel like I just get hot here before I'm ready to pickle things. And then my dill is like done. Um, but I still, that'd be my winner out of the three of these, but I'm not like so sold on the hair that I won't try another type of dill in the future. Um, not dissatisfied. In other words, I'm not dissatisfied with any of those, but I'm not in love with any of them. Um, looks like I have corn here. We had fun with corn this year. And I apologize that my packets are so jacked up because it was wet on the day I planted corn. Um, so we grew popcorn. From Haas, I got Japanese holeless popcorn. And this produced well. It made good um, good um, cobs that didn't have a bunch of bug damage or anything. It didn't really seem to succumb to that at all. You just leave them on until the whole stock dries up and take them off and then pull off the kernels. I have not popped it yet. So maybe I'll set this aside and come back to it in January when we've had a chance to pop it and put it part of that video um, just to give you more feedback. But um, I chose this one specifically because it's holeless, which means when it pops, it shouldn't have that hard thing in the middle. And I just wanted to see how that went. Um, and this is a really damaged packet. <laughs> this is painted mountain ornamental corn um, because I grew my fall decorations this year. And um, it was pretty. Yeah, there we go. It was, it was really pretty. It didn't, I didn't have, it produced very many ears. The ears that it did produce were great looking though. And the stalks were actually pretty because they have like a purple tinge to the straight part of the stalk too. And that made it kind of fun. Um, I planted dent corn or flint corn or whatever you want to call it. I have field corn for the chickens. This year I tried, um, it's the first time doing it, tried Trucker's favorite yellow corn that I got from Haas. And um, that, that turned out really well. Those stalks were huge. They were like between 14 and 20 feet tall. They were gigantic, um, but they grew, they stayed up on their own. They were, they produced an ear or more per plant. They seemed to do fine. I'd get full, fully engaged ears. Um, again, just leave them on the thing and they dry on their own. And then you use a little thing to take them, the corn up. And so now I have like Corn will crack a little bit for the chickens in, on the coldest days of winter. I don't give them like straight corn very often, but just, I'll toss a little extra out there when it's really cold because because um, they need the carbs and things like that to stay warm. The, the digestion process warms them up. So then the last corn I grew, peaches and cream is my favorite. Um, 
I just got, I got two packs from Haas this year, um, cause I wanted to plant a lot. Um, and they did well. They did, um, I planted them in a different direction this year. Uh, last year was my first year really planting corn and it did fine, but it didn't fully fertilize and it had a little pest. This year, the pests weren't so as, nearly as big of a deal. Um, but I planted them instead of like last year, I planted them this way. This year I planted them this way because they're wind pollinated and I was paying attention last year to where the wind was blowing and um, it just made more sense. The wind's blowing this way. If I have them this way and they're blowing all the pollen past the corn rows, it's not very good. But if the wind's blowing this way and it goes, you know, from this plant to this plant to this plant to this plant. And so I, I'm going to continue that again next year. I think that really helps the pollination. Um, so I did better than I did last year. I think corn is a little bit of a learning curve type plant though, um, as far as like sweet corn. Everything else was super easy, but it, we did enjoy that. We had corn in the cloud several times. I pulled some off and froze it. Um, I'm gonna plant even more next year. Uh, looks like next I have flowers. Flowers, okay. So this is something I planted last year, the um, white Kilimanjaro white uh, marigolds. They work very well, they germinate well, they grow, they're pretty huge bushes. My chickens love to eat them. So as they start to die off, well, as I clip off like deadhead, I'll feed those to chickens. But as the plants start to dry up, die off right now, we're getting our first frosts and stuff. I just throw whole branches over there and they attack them. Um, I think I planted another. Yeah. I also planted a, I got from Burpee. So there's no picture strawberry blonde marigold. And that was really pretty. That was really pretty. I'll probably plant, I'll probably plant that one again, just for more variety next year. Um, I got, my second year planting the giant wine venere zinnias. These are just a showstopper every time. My daughter grew these this year too. They germinate so easily. They grow huge. I can prune them so that they bush just like basil. Um, they have beautiful, vibrant flowers. They're just, and, and the pollinators. Those are a pollinator attractor for sure. I planted calendula. I planted bronze beauty. Um, it was my first year planting calendula. They, these did well. They've they grew, I, I've dried some calendula flowers to make like calendula oil and maybe some salve, um, but they were really pretty. I will try to plant more of these next year because um, I don't know that I was able to get enough to make salve, but next year I think I might find a different part of my property for just flowers and do like a big long row of them or something. Um, I grew Phlox Blushing Bride. This is something my daughter asked for for her little garden and I grew some of them myself too and these did well. They're actually a perennial. They look like a little cute pinkish white annual, but they're actually a perennial. So I'm looking forward to seeing how well they weather the winter here um, because I might plant, plant them into our landscape um, in the front, um, but they're just cute little mounding ground cover type flowers. Um, I planted hyssop, arcado pink. The spikes in that picture are longer than mine were, but they were pretty flowers. These germinated, but didn't stay well before repotting, if that makes any sense. Like they sprouted up, but didn't, I don't know if they dampened off or what, but um, I think I ended up, I tried planting five and I think I only ended up with one that survived. I might still try again though. Flowers I feel like are way more temperamental than vegetables. Vegetables are easier to grow flower than flowers. Blue bloom flowers, this just looked like fun. And it was, so, um, these, and they're perennial too, which makes them fun, but they have like the balloon shaped thing that when it opens looks like that. And so these are just fun, but then that, these are edible. And my girls had so much fun this summer counting like, oh, there's eight of them today, trimming off these blooms and putting them in the blender with lemonade to turn it purple. <laughs> it was just fun. They were just enjoyable. I will probably, cause they're perennial, I can leave what I have out there. there. Oh, they germinated fine too. Um, but I will probably plant a couple more, like make a bigger patch of them. I grew German chamomile. Um, these did fine. I forgot to like dry them though. My daughter wanted these for tea and I just forgot to try that. Let's see. Okay, this, let's see. I tried Larkspur Giant Imperial. These did not do very well for me. They just didn't do well. Like half of them germinated and then half of them 
once they were transplanted, didn't really survive. Um, but it didn't say anything about um, not, you know, like some flowers you should only direct sow and you shouldn't transplant. It didn't say anything about doing that on the package direction. So um, I like Larkspur though, so I might still try to grow them again. Um, this one, Apricot Lemonade Cosmos. These were pretty. Um, they were a lot lighter than I thought they would be. They were like a light yellow with barely a tinge of pink, but they were still pretty. Excuse me. And they, um, they grow into pretty big plants too. Um, Scabious, Black Knight. So I, got, I grew two different Scabious. These were both new to me this year as well. Um, Black Knight and Beaujolais. They both did okay. The Black Knight was just way more of a healthy plant it seemed like like they both germinated they both grew but these just like produced out the wazoo whereas these were like they're nice you know um they're they're a really dark color they're pretty I don't know if I'll plant these again when it comes to annuals I kind of make my mind up each year on its own um I grew these for my chickens the Hopi black dye sunflowers um, these grew easily. They grew big. They grew lots of healthy heads of seeds. They were not as big as what they show in the picture. I think I had one gigantic one, but all the rest were more, I don't know, five, six inch heads, but they still produce a lot of seeds that I have now harvested for my chickens over the winter. Um, Tower Series Mix. This is, these were asters. Are these asters? Yes. Chinese asters, right? I'm thinking if these are the Chinese asters, I think they were, these were beautiful. The plants did well. They produced well. Um, even though they are annuals, I will grow them again. They just have fluffy, pretty heads with pretty, this color mix was really pretty. It was like purples and whites. It was really pretty. Um, the Dichondra, Silver Falls and Emerald Falls. Um, these didn't do well for me. I think I'm wondering if they need more like cold striation than there's no direction for that here, but um, I think I tried to plant three of each and I only ended up with one of each that stayed alive through everything. Um, it was also my first time planting those, but I've just heard that dichondra is easy, so I don't know. All right, moving on to watermelon. I grew three types this year. I do grew crimson sweet, sugar baby, and Cherry Grande. And I will say Cherry Grande did the best out of those three. They were big, healthy vines. They were very prolific. They produced a lot of watermelons. They tasted pretty good. Um, not the best ones I've ever had, but they tasted pretty good. Uh, Sugar Babies, These none of these were bad. They all tasted fine and they all germinated and grew. Um, the Sugar Babies were so cute. They're so cute. Um, they didn't produce as many as the um, Cherry Grande did, but they were still fun to have and they tasted, they tasted good. Crimson Sweet Watermelon, I don't know how it tastes. It grew fine, it produced somewhere in between the Sugar Baby Cherry Grande level. Um, they were healthy, but these were the ones that the pests ate. Um, and it seems like I had a couple not so tiny animals get a hold of these and so I'm wondering if they're the most delicious because these are the ones that the animals wanted. I'm gonna try them again next year. Like they grew, I got them and then right when they were ready to pick I would go out to pick one and it would be like it would look beautiful on the top and when I lifted it up on the bottom there was a hole and the whole thing was hollowed inside out. It was crazy. It was crazy. Um cucumber man I got a lot of did I really plant that many cucumbers this year? Okay, so I did a lot of experimenting with the cucumbers this year. Um, let's start with this. I did, so the Boston pickling, I, this was the only pickling cucumber I did this year. I have decided, unless you convince me otherwise, that those are the best ones for pickling. And so I just grew a bazillion of these and I, that's my future plan. Unless you tell me that there is some other one I absolutely have to try. Last year I did Chicago pickling and they, they were just more difficult to pickle just because they're shape. They weren't as uniform in shape. And when you're trying to stuff them in jars and stuff, it was just a pain. 
Um, I do not remember. This is unopened, so I didn't do that one. Um, I tried the B Alpha again because everyone keeps saying they love it. it. Is the third time. I think I actually got a fruit this year, but it was it was just a cucumber. I have not had good luck growing those. I don't know what the secret is. This I only planted. This is a Silor hybrid. I planted it was a freebie that came with the seed order, and it was, didn't do well. I ordered Cucumber Diva from Pine Tree. Um, it, I think I got like one or two off of this as well. It just didn't produce that well. Everyone swears up and down by Market More Cucumbers, and I have never planted one. So this year I was like, I'm gonna order that Market More Cucumber I'm talk everyone's talking about. And I go to look them up, and there's like three or four different types of Market More Cucumbers. I didn't know which one to get. So I got Market More 97 because that was the most recent number. So I figured that has the most improvements. And it did do the best of all the cucumbers I planted this year. So um, as far as slicing cucumbers. So if you have a suggestion for me for slicing cucumber, I'm still open to suggestions. But for next year, currently my plan is just to plant more of these. Um, they did well. They did better, they stayed better, they produced more cucumbers. At first I thought they weren't going to because they were a little later than my other cucumbers. But once they came, they were more prolific and all that stuff. Beans, 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 okay. Um, let's start with the green bean type, okay. So I planted blue light green beans. Um, these did well. I had problems finding them this year so I had to order them from a new company. Um, R.H. Shumway, it did fine. They, they were very productive as those tend to be, um, just like in previous years. And currently that's my plan is just to stick to those. I have heard good things about the Jade Green Bean. If you've planted those, let me know in the comments what you think about those, um, compared to Blue Lake, if you can compare the two. Because I do like those rounder, uh, beans. And then I grew, for the first time I grew yellow wax beans. These ones from, um, Baker Creek, the Brewer de Roca and Bull. And these were so prolific and I fell in love. They was the first, I haven't really eaten them in the past, but I fell in love with these. I will probably plant more of these than green beans next year because I thought these were delicious. They grew like I pulled waves and waves of beans off these. I canned beans. We ate them. Um, I liked them uh, like roasted with pancetta. Um, these were just great. I would highly recommend these um, and they were very easy to grow very easy. I also tried these just again because of the fun name. These are grease, greasy grits green beans. As a green bean, I did not fully enjoy them, at least compared to Blue Lake. They weren't horrible. They just weren't anything special and they have to be strung. But I did in further research find that some people grow them to eat as a dry bean. So um, I left some out there to harvest. I need to do that soon. And I will try to get back to you on that um, if I remember, I'm trying to keep it separate. If I remember to see how they did, to see if the dry bean is good, because the people that eat it as a dry bean are like, oh, those are like the best dry bean ever. Um, so that's, let's see, Blue Lake. Okay. So then dry beans I grew this year. I drew dark red kidney beans, grew dark red kidney beans. Um, they were fine. They were prolific. They were good. Um, I've eaten some. I grew black turtle beans um, that also did well. They produced well. Um, and then I grew pinto beans that also grew well and did fine and are now in dry storage in my pantry as well. So those, like all the dry beans I tried, dry beans are really easy, you guys. I mean, they 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 have a very high germination rate and all you gotta do is let them grow and like die there on the vine and then when everything's dead and crispy, harvest the beans. And they're just ready to harvest and just sit in your pantry. They're awesome. Okay, peppers, Anaheim pepper. I grew these and they're spicy. I knew they were spicy, but those were, these were, these were good seeds. They produced very, very well. I planted an ancho. Did I harvest any anchos? I may have mislabeled this. Oh, I 
think I thought this was a poblano and I'm like, why the heck is it so hot? Because it was an ancho. They look very similar. Oh no, you know what? Okay, ancho is the name of it when it's dried. Poblano is when it's fresh. So it is the same one, but it was hot. Poblanos are like real iffy on sometimes like their level of heat, but they've always been either mild to medium. These ones were like burning my mouth. And so I didn't end up using many of them. That's what I like to use when I make my own tomatoes or green chilies is the poblanos. And um, I didn't, I didn't this year, they were too hot. And I don't know what makes that happen. If it's just random in the seeds, like they're not, hybrid is not true um, or if it's growing conditions, like certain types of weather make it sweeter and certain types make it hotter. I don't know. Um, for jalapeno this year, I planted La Bamba Hybrid. That was a good one, a very good producer, beautiful, perfectly shaped, nice skinned jalapenos like you would find in the store. Um, wrong, wrong spot, okay. I planted Lunchbox Mix. These are those little, um, the small pointier snacking peppers like you would buy in the store. So I planted two small ones, the Lunchbox Mix and the Mini Bell Blend. And the Mini Bell Blend is like, they're small round ones. And they're meant to like cut off the top and stuff like appetizers, like small stuffed peppers. Um, these tasted fine and they were very prolific. I prefer the taste of the Lunchbox Mix. These produce a lot earlier though. Um, and so I might next year plant just like two of these, just have some earlier in the season. And then when these come in, I'll plant more of these, the lunchbox minis, cause I prefer their flavor and they are just as prolific and beautiful. Um, I just like their flavor better, a little sweeter. Um, yeah, I planted California wonder for my bell pepper this year. Um, those did fine. Um, those did really good actually. They did really good. Banana peppers always do really well. Um, and I like to harvest them in different stages of color and I pickle them like pepperoncinis. That's what we use around here. That's all the peppers I planted this year. I planted a lot of peppers, but they were a lot of just a few types, you know? Cause I'm kind of coming with peppers where I'm like, these are my faves. Um, so my son wanted to plant okra. He planted red burgundy and the Clemson spineless are what I got for him. And he liked them both. They both grew very well. They both were very prolific. You gotta stay on it with okra. You gotta pick them when they're small or they're too tough. And man, they were both just like, ah, I'm done. Stop with the okra. I don't like okra. He did. I taught him how to make fried okra so he can feed himself now. Um, okay, random leftover stuff. I planted an artichoke imperial star that I got from Burpee. It did well. Um, I don't remember how many I tried to sow, but I planted two. And I know I didn't try to sow that many because they were a fairly big plant and I wanted them out front. I only want limited space there. Um, they did well. I did not get any fruit this year, which I think is normal. I see occasionally someone like Laura from Garden Ants or on YouTube, like she'll get a lot of artichokes the first year. And I'm not sure how, because I thought you were supposed to, those are supposed to be like a few years in. It's a cool plant though. Um, the plant's large and healthy. Um, I'd say it's about two feet tall. It's not like a full size plant yet. Um, and it's a perennial. So next year, the year after it just has different foliage too. So that makes it kind of more fun. I planted jicama. These did not germinate that well, but the ones that I got grown were delicious. They were the best jicama I have ever had. They were very sweet and very um, watery, like very moist. And I, I will still try to plant more next year, even though I didn't have that good of luck with germination. Um, and I'll do some research to see if that might have been used error. I haven't planted jicama before. Bunching Warrior Onion is a green onion that I planted. Um, if these did, these did very well. Uh, they grow really big, like big fat green onions. You got to get them when they're small. Um, I realized I didn't bring in my, my other onion things. I did not have as great of a year. I planted onion plants, little, little seedling type things this year. Um, a type of candy apple red. I don't remember where I got them from. Might have been pine tree or territorial. I did not have good luck with them bulbing up well this year. Um, I planted two types of yellow and one type of red. I have to find the paper to really, to really 
If you want to know, ask in the comments and I will find the paper my order form that has which types those are specifically. I've never really had a problem with onions bulbing and stuff before and this year they were, I mean they grew, they were just kind of small. Um, so I don't know what to think about that. I also, the other last fun thing is I planted peanuts this year. Uh, these were Valencia's. I only had a small space left so I didn't even use the whole bag but these peanuts are easy. They were like, stick them in the ground, they grew, in, I put them in my worst bed. When I moved here, there were two, two raised garden beds and they were junk. They were full of weeds. They were dead dirt. Like I, I turned and dug in those to pull out the weeds. I never came across anything alive. Not a ant, not a spider, not a worm. It was like dead dirt. I amended it, but it's still like you can, that dirt even though I have added a lot to it and mulched it and stuff, it looks different than all the other dirt in my garden, those two beds, and you can tell. And it's, it compacts more, it has more clay in it. Um, but those grew right through it. Those pink peanuts grew right through it and my kids had so much fun harvesting that. And when I say my kids, y'all, like, it can be easy to picture little kids, but my kids are 12, 13, and 16 right now. So, I mean, they had fun with it too. They're like, this is, you grew peanuts, oh my gosh. Um, so now I'm kind of on the learning curve of how to roast them and get flavor. Mine want, my kids want them in the shell, but I feel like the shells really need to be cleaned and you can't get much flavor. Anyway. Okay, now I have these all sorted in companies. So let's go through. I want to first address three, three companies that I ordered from new this year. Um, they are, and I'm dressing the three together because they're related. I did not know this when I ordered until I started on the second and then the third one. I was like, oh, I see what's going on here. They're like owned by the same company. Got dirt on my table. So those companies are Vermont Bean, R.H. Shumway, and Totally Tomatoes. And I tried them because for each one of them, I wasn't trying to try all three. They each had something I was looking for and could not find during the whole seed shortage last year. So like, um, I know my, my orange peruche was in one of these, my orange peruche tomato, um, my, my blue light green beans I couldn't find anywhere. Um, I think my lunchbox mini as well. So, so I will just say this. I don't think their sites are very usually user friendly, especially the ordering section, um, and for at least one of them, it has this box checked for you to that they can add substitutions if they're out of something. And I didn't catch on to that until a second company. So if you order from one of them, look for that and uncheck it. If you, I don't want substitutions. I'm, I spend a lot of time researching the exact varieties I order. Um, that said, nothing I ordered from them was bad per se. Like... It all did well. The only thing I'm looking at that did not do well was the um, Silo or Cucumber, but that was a freebie. I didn't order that. Um, so I would say these were not the cheapest. Um, they are like, they have different prices on the same things, even though they're like the same company. Um, but they were a source. If I could not find something I needed anywhere else, I would go back to them. I want to say one of them also didn't offer tracking with my package of seeds. And I'm like, mm, I want that stuff. Okay, so those are not on my favorites list of companies to order from. Um, like I said, though, nothing I ordered from them was a dud. So, all right, from Territorial, I didn't order as much from them this year. I think a lot of what I ordered from them was fall stuff. Um, well, so I had the Tower, Aster, the San Marzano, and the Momotoro. Those all did fine. Um, I've ordered from Territorial before. Oh, no. I made two piles of Territorial because here I have the my Market More Cucumbers, my Cherry Grande, my Dill, and my Painted Mountain Corn. Um, yeah, everything was fine from them. And I have ordered from them before. Um, they have pretty good prices, too. Um, there was one thing that I ordered from them, that, not this year, but it was a plant that I didn't have good luck with, but, um, I ordered, okay, from Burpee and Gurney's for the first time this year, and, um, so from Burpee, I ordered Art the Artichoke, the Blushing Bride Phlox, the Strawberry Blonde Marigold, and Steakhouse Tomato. Um, they were all fine. Like I said, that Steakhouse Tomato wasn't my favorite. I didn't think it was hybrid worthy. Um, 
I just prefer not to order from those giant companies um, that have dubious seed origin. But I will say that Burpee did have good customers. Is it Burpee or Gurney's? Um, one of the two had good customer service. There was something missing in my package and it, I emailed them and they sent it right out. Um, from Gurney's, I had the beef steak tomatoes and dill delight. That was okay. So they, those were not bad experiences. I just prefer family owned companies. Um, Pine Tree. I ordered a lot from Pine Tree this year. They had stuff when other people were out. It seemed like at the time I was ordering, it was all, you know, last year was kind of all about when you ordered, <laughs> or did, you, did you order on a lucky day? And let's see, I'm looking through and everything was fine. Everything, everything. The, the only problems I had were the silver, the dichondra, which again, um, I think florals are harder to grow and yeah. And I think I need to just, I think that might be a little bit user error and maybe some information on the packet. Um, and my gardener, I always enjoy ordering from him. His prices are good. The shipping is free. If you order a certain amount, the customer service, he's always sold out of something I want though. Um, they're also like some, some people will be like, yeah, but the packets are smaller. Some of them are smaller, but a lot of times that's fine. I don't want to pay $6 for a packet of 200 cucumber seeds because I'm not going to plant 200 cu cucumbers. I would rather pay $2 for a count of 30. Like, and, um, I ordered, and I ordered from him beyond that too this year, like after that mint original seed thing. Um, that's one of my go-tos. Am I Gardener? I would say my go-tos are Am I Gardener? What is this? Baker Creek, Pine Tree and Territorial and Haas. My Haas stuff is all good. It was all my, most of my corns, my thyme, my zinnia were from Haas. Um, and those all did well. Um, Baker Creek, I feel like the prices aren't as good, but the shipping is free, even if you order one pack. So I love when I can order from them um, because that that shipping, man, it kills you sometimes. Um, and they have some fun. There's are, there's are all heirlooms. So when I buy something from them, I know I can try to seed save, which I'm just now getting into. Let me know if you want videos on that. Um, nothing has been a dud that I've gotten from them, um, at least not from the summer stuff. So... I go there again. Another new company for me this year was Select Seeds. Got some flowers from them. I'm going to sneeze. <laughs> and I usually sneeze twice. Not right now. Okay. Um, these were not cheap, but there were some flowers I fell in love with online and ordered. Um, the only thing that didn't do well was Larkspur. Um, I'll research to see if that was my fault, but, um, their, their packet information is decent. I always love the good pictures on the packets. Um, they just weren't cheap. So I would go to them. If there was a flower I was in love with, I would go to them if I couldn't find it somewhere else, just because they, they were very expensive compared to a lot of other places, but they were the only place I could find a couple things I was looking for. Um, the only packet I have right here from John Sheepers, this is new to me this year, John Sheepers, is the Apricot Lemonade Cosmos, but I do, I do know that I got something else from them. It's just out, it's out in my garage because it has, um, it had a thing. So here's my thing with them. Again, they're, they're like select seeds. They're not very cheap, but I was able to find some stuff there I couldn't find elsewhere. But my other, it looks like the packet information is good. But the other thing I ordered was something called Kiss Me Over the Garden Gate, and it didn't do well. And I finally figured out through my own research that it's because it needs to be cold stratified. Well, nothing on her that packet or in their website said anything about that. Um, so I'm glad I didn't try to seed them all and waste them because, you know, now I'm able to keep some and I'll throw them out in the winter this year. But um, that's the kind of thing that's a little bit important and I feel like should be on a seed packet if you need if something needs to be cold stratified, stratified, um, it should be there. So I don't know how I feel about them as a company. Um, 
it's probably like select seeds. I would go there if I couldn't find it elsewhere, but um, yeah. Anyways, let me know if you have some recommendations for varieties you think I just need to grow. Um, leave it in the comments because I'm always I'm always on the lookout and I, I like to grow things based on flavor. Um, I will be back in a couple months to give you all the like broccoli, cauliflower, carrots, those kinds of things that are growing out there growing right now. And um, I'll see you in the next one.